fuels and uh, acts, acts as a major power source for our plane. This, the battery is connected to the ESCs. Uh, the full form of ESCs are electronic speed control controllers, uh, each having various uh, current specifications. The battery is connected to the ESCs. Next are the motors having different KVA ratings. These are brushless DC motors with stator and rotator. Inside they have coils if you can see it. Okay. The next are the propellers. The propellers are connected to the motor here and this rotates. The propellers have different diameters and pitches. They help the plane to get thrust and lift. The next coming on are the receivers having different channels and each channel is set for one particular function and this is the antenna of the receiver. It is a major component in our plane because the receiver connects electronically all of these components. And lastly, uh, this is a transmitter having throttle and rudder and pitch having auxiliary switches too. And this is the antenna. And there are various functions which will be discussed later. Also, these are the servo motors. They, they are fixed in the elevators and the ailerons of the plane and help move them. They help in giving thrust and lift to the plane. Now let's have a detailed look at the brushless DC motor. The working of the brushless DC motor is not very complex. It has the coils here wounded and that is called the stator and this rotates hence it's called the rotator. This part is connected to the forward to the front part of the plane. There are two types of motor basically brush DC motor and brushless DC motor. All these motors here are brushless DC motor since they provide 85 to 90 percent more efficiency. Uh, the difference between a brushless motor and a brush motor is mainly about the efficiency and the total power it uses. I'll explain you the working of a brushless DC motor. The armature contains an electromagnet. These coils get activated when electricity is passed through these. Hence, uh, they are called temporary magnets. It creates a magnetic field in the armature that attracts and repels the magnet in the stator. So the armature spins through 180 degrees. To keep it spinning, you have to change the poles of the electromagnet. The brushes handle this change in polarity. The selection of a motor is very important. There are various motors with different specifications such as this motor has 11, 1100 kV rating. However, this one just has 935 and plus the weight of this is far more greater than that of this. So, every, however, every motor serves for a different purpose. There are many things to consider such as the thrust it gives, its kV rating, the current it draws, maximum voltage it requires, maximum power it delivers. Lastly, the weight is very important since this, this motor here weighs approximately 110 grams with a KV rating of just 720 while this weighs 70 grams with a KV rating of 935. Since our plane flies, we need less weight so that there is less drag. Hence, selection of a motor is very important. First of all, think about the numbers when you are looking at the props. For example, 12 into 5. Check this out. Look, there is written 10 into 5e. It's written 13 into 10e. There are many numbers. 
written all over them. If you can see, this 10 into 5e, and then this 13 into 10e. What do these numbers represent? Uh, the 13 in this is an inch diameter prop with a pitch of 10. The diameter is self-explanatory. The pitch means that in a perfect wall, one complete rotation of the prop will move 5 inches of air through it or it will move 5 inches forward. Now consider the transmission in your car. The lower the pitch, the less air it will grab or move. But it will have more power to pull something through the air because it will rotate faster. Similar to lower gears on your car. If you want to climb a steep hill, you put your car into a lower gear. The motor turns at a higher RPM for a given speed. Thus more torque, more energy passed onto the wheels through the lower gear. But the tires will turn slower than if you were in a higher gear. Same with the prop. So if you want 3D, you will want a lot of power to hang the plane on the prop. So a lower pitch would be necessary if you want a higher top end speed. Then a higher pitch is what's needed. This is a very basic description of what happens. There are limitations of course like maximum RPM capabilities of the particular engine and of course the capability of that engine to provide the necessary power to do what you want it to do. Uh, the selection of a propeller. Normally we don't have much work to do on this since the sizes of the propellers are written on the engines. You just have to see the specifications. The bill when it uh, the bill has it all. Uh, also, let me show you how to connect a propeller. This is the nose of the motor. It comes off like this, and you can put in any any one. This is hand tight, but however, we need an Allen key to fix this such that when in motion, this doesn't come out because the speed of this thing is very high. I just did this and it will keep on rotating. You can imagine how fast it would be when the engine would provide this power. So we need to tighten up with Allen key so that this thing doesn't come out. Now let's have a look at the servos. A typical servo looks like a rectangular box with a motor shaft coming out of one end and a connector coming out the other end. There are three wires. One is power, one is control and one is ground. Now let's have a look at which one is power, control and ground. The orange wire is a ground wire. The red wire is the control wire and the brown wire is the power wire. The servos work in voltages between 4 and 6 volts. The control line is used to position the servo. The servo motors comes in different sizes which affect the overall size of the servo. It mainly consists of gears as you can see here. The inside. The amount of power applied to the motor is proportional to the distance it needs to travel. So, if the shaft needs to turn a large distance, the motor will run at full speed. Let's have a look at the demo. I have connected uh, this thing over here. And this is a servo tester with input of the battery. And you can connect the servos over here according to the specifications uh, that is source, control and ground. There is a select button with three functions. We can either rotate this manually, we can put it in neutral and there is auto testing. This is the battery which is connected. These are the bullet connectors. You cannot connect it here so we have different out inlet. And as we learned just now, the ground, the yellow wire should be connected here to the ground.
Now since it's on manual, if I rotate this, it's going to rotate. So if the shaft needs to turn a large distance, the motor will run at full speed. If it needs to turn only a small amount, the motor will run at a slower speed. The motor I'm talking about is inside the servo. This is called proportional control. We use it to rotate the ailerons and the elevators in the plane. The, the modes here, let me show you. This is the manual one. The more I rotate, the more this thing rotates. And hence I know that the servo is working. The next mode is the neutral mode. No matter what I do, it's not going to rotate since it's neutral. And then there's auto. It tests on its own. And we can see it's working and it rotates less than 90 degrees. And this is servo.